first and foremost, this was an absolute shit show by the FIA and Michael Massey. After Max hit the wall at the end of qualifying, Red Bull has stated ahead of the race they didn't need a new gearbox. I felt at the time this is a big risk to take, as a 5 place drop for a new one is much more recoverable than a DNF at this crucial time in the season. But however, they said they looked at all the data and they were happy with it and the gearbox was fine. Hamilton got a great start off the line and was in the lead into turn 1. He then pulled away from Bottas in P2 and managed to create a bit of a gap. The safety car came out and then he got paid for new tyres. He came out in P2 as Max stayed out. The session was then red flag and he was angry over radio as Max got a free pit stop due to that red flag. Max could change his tyres under those red flag conditions and was effectively leader of the race. The race then restarted as a standing start. Hamilton got a great start off P2 and jumped Max for P1. He went into turn 1 into the lead, however Max didn't want to concede and he just went round the outside on turn 2 and went ahead. Ocon then managed to get in the middle of both drivers and the session was then red flag for further incidents behind. Hamilton was then on the radio to say that Max passed him off the track. He stated that Max needs to get the place back. Then the radio discussions between Michael Massey and Red Bull were frankly just a joke. Michael Massey was negotiating with Red Bull about giving the place back, which Red Bull agreed to and started P3 behind Ocon and Hamilton. So on the second restart, Hamilton was in P2. He didn't cover the inside, which Max just sent his car on the inside. He then had to take avoiding action and came together with Ocon just a little bit. He then was in P3 as Max got past Ocon as well. He then cleared Ocon himself and quickly caught up to Max. He got close but there was loads of VSCs that came out. This hampered his progress as Max was on the softer tyres. He then got close and made a move on lap 37. However, again, Max didn't want to concede the position and went deep. He took himself and Lewis off the track. Michael Massey then told Red Bull that he needed to give the place back. Red Bull then said to Max to do it strategically. However, Michael Massey didn't give enough time to tell Mercedes to tell Lewis. So Max slowed down to try and let Lewis pass, but Lewis was confused and then he went into the back of him. He then came over Team Rivera to say what was Max doing and that he brake tested him. Max then got a 5 second penalty for leaving the track and gaining an advantage, as he didn't give the place back fast enough and then they had that incident when they came together. The miscommunication during the whole race was really a shambles. Max then let him pass, but then repassed him straight away. Then on lap 43, Lewis managed to get past him correctly. He then pushed Max off wide and off the track, at which he got a warning from Michael Massey for. He then cruised to the end for his third win in a row and he got fastest lap as well. Bottas got a good start and was in P2 and managed to keep Max behind. He then pitted like Lewis under the safety car. He was in P3 as Max didn't pit. On the restart he then got jumped by Ocon and then on the second restart he locked up and went wide. He was then behind Ricardo and Ocon in P5. He managed to clear Ricardo fast enough after some encouragement from the team and Toto Wolf. He was then chasing Ocon for that last podium place position and he managed to get that place just on the line before the flag. Reminds me of what he did to Lance at Baku a few years ago. It was a good recovery drive for him as he lost places at the restarts and it was a good help in Mercedes fight for the constructors title. Max got a decent start off the line and was in P3 behind Bottas. The safety car then came out and he was complaining on the radio Bottas was backing him up. This was done so Mercedes could double stack the cars. He then didn't pit and stayed out. He had the lead and the session was then red flagged. He then could change his tyres for free as a free pit stop. He then took pole for that restart. However, he got jumped by Hamilton straight away off the line. He then just went on the outside, went off the track and tried to keep the lead. And he done this by passing off the track. The race was then red flagged again as there was a few incidents behind. He then had to get the place back to Ocon and Lewis on the second restart. So he was in P3 for the second restart. For that restart, he decided to put on a medium set of tyres. He made a great start off the line and threw his car on the inside. He took the lead and Lewis had to take avoiding action. He then managed to pass Ocon for the lead. Lewis was then catching him and he made a move on lap 37. But Max went deep into turn one and kept the lead. His race engineer then came on the radio to say give the place back. But again, he said to do it strategically. Max then looked to slow down so much so that Lewis was confused what was happening. Then obviously Lewis went in the back of him. Max then got a 5 second penalty for leaving the track and gaining an advantage. Max then let Lewis pass but then repassed him straight away. He then slowed down again and let Lewis pass on lap 42. Lewis then pushed him wide and off the track. He then cruised in P2 and came home in that position as well. He couldn't go for fastest lap as he had a 5 second penalty and there was not enough time for a free pit stop. His tyres were also done at the end, so even if he didn't let Lewis pass, he probably would have got passed by Lewis anyways. Perez got a decent start off the line and nearly went into Max. He got stuck behind Charles and he pitted under the safety car. The red flag then came out and he had a poor restart. He then got tagged by Charles on his inside, who spun him round and took him out of the race. There was too much damage and he had to stop on track. Charles started P4 and pitted under the safety car which was a wrong decision. He fell down the order but put on the hard tyres. He did well to come home in P7. Sainz started P15 and didn't pit under the safety car. He put the medium tyres on the restart. He made up a few places because he didn't pit. However, towards the end of the race he was losing those tyres and he got passed by his teammate and came home in P8. Ferrari now have a 38.5 gap to McLaren in P3. They'll most likely hold that position to come third in the championship. 
Lando started P7 and had a good start and was up to P6. He was on the soft tyres so he paid under the safety car. He was then down in P14 as the red flag came out. On the restart he then dropped down a few more places due to Perez spinning. He was dropped down to P16. He then managed to fight his way back through the field and finish in P10. Daniel started P11 and benefited from the red flag. The drivers around him pitted while he didn't. He was in P4 as the race restarted. However, he got done by Bottas at the end and he came home in P5. Very good race for McLaren and Daniel as they outscored Ferrari by one point. However, I feel like the fight for third is really over as Ferrari have a good lead in that third place and it looked really cemented. It's good to see Daniel have a clean and good race and it was great driving by Lando to get back into the points as well. He got hard done by that red flag well as Daniel benefited from that red flag. Alonso started P13 and made places at the start. He then pitted under the safety car which was the wrong choice. He then didn't really make up any places throughout the rest of the race. He was struggling with the tyres and he came home in P13. Ocon started P8 and stayed out after the safety car came out. He then had track position and started P4 for the restart. He then jumped Lewis into turn 2. This is as the second red flag then came out. He then started on pole for the second restart but then got mugged by Verstappen on the inside just as Lewis did. He kept Lewis behind him for only one lap but Lewis passed him easily. He then tried to manage the gap to Bottas behind but Bottas was quick and managed to get him just on the line on that last lap. He came home in P4 but should have been P3 but just got taken for that position by Bottas. That result by Ocon really confirms Alpine's position in the constructors. They've now secured fifth position from AlphaTauri. AlphaTauri are 29 points behind and I doubt they will get a 1-2 finish in Abu Dhabi. So it was a solid drive and it really deserved the podium but it just wasn't meant to be as Bottas took it on the line. Lance started P18 and overtook George Russell off the track. Weirdly though somehow who's managed to keep that position. He then had a slow stop and George passed him back. Lance then did well to fight back and come home in P11. Vettel started P17 and avoided all the melee at the start. He was up to P15 and then he had a clash with Sonoda. Sonoda just sent his car on the inside and then crashed with him. Sonoda got a penalty for that move. He was then coming up to Kimi to pass him. But Kimi then tried to keep it on the outside and then crashed into him as well. There was too much damage on Vettel's car so he had to retire at the end. Mick started P19 and unfortunately crashed out early. He crashed out early on lap 10 after having overstayed in turn 22. That obviously brought out the first red flag. Mazepin started P20 and on the restart he crashed into Russell. It was really a bad accident as he just went into the back of Russell. George had slowed down because Perez had spun. So he was avoiding a crash and then Mazepin couldn't do nothing to stop. The crash was really high speed as he went into the back of George and without the halo I wouldn't imagine what would happen. It could have been much worse if the halo wasn't there. But luckily he was fine and he took them both out of the race. Gasly started P6 and came home in P6. He had to deal with hot brakes early on. He had a bad start and dropped a few places. He then stayed out on the hard tyre and came home in P6. Sonoda started P8 and had a bad start and dropped down to P12. He spun after having contact with Vessel, which he then got a penalty for. He lost his front ring so he had to pit for a new one. He rejoined last and came home in P14. Kimi started P12 and pitted under the safety car. He lost a few places because of the red flag. He then had a clash with Seb and had to pit for a new nose. He dropped down the order and came home in P16. Giovinazzi started P10 and didn't pit under the safety car. He was in P8 for the restart and just managed the race and came home for P9. George started P14 and had a bad start and dropped down the order to P17. He was angry over radio for Lawrence's pass as he believed he passed him off the track and the place should have been given back to him. He then managed to get re-passed him after a slow pit stop. He then slowed down because Perez had a spin and Mazepin went into the back of him and he had to retire. Latifi started P16 and benefited from the red flag. He came out on the hard tyres and came home in P12. Yes, I'm doing a section on Michael Messi as well. He's had an absolute horrible race trying to manage it. The first decision on lap 14 because of the red flag. Schumacher crashed out on lap 10 and hit the barrier in turn 22. They stopped the session because of the tech pro barrier. I was a bit confused why I installed a tech pro barrier that will break after one crash, especially at a section where there's known to be crashes. So it made no sense why they would do that and why he red flagged the session. The second red flag made more sense as there was too many incidents. He then gave the opportunity for Red Bull to give the place back. I didn't understand why he kept the them offers like he was on deal or no deal. Max has passed a league off the track and he needed to get the place back so the radio message should have been an order not an offer then of course if they didn't accept then pass it on to the stewards he then made a decision to do another standing start this was even after the carnage we saw after the first restart i feel this was wrong as it was too much chaos then we had multiple vscs this was due to the debris out on track i feel like this is the time when the session should have been red flagged as there were too much debris on track and it was worthy of a red flag the vsc just constantly came out alonso then came onto the radio and said agreed that it should have been a red flag then when max pushed lewis off the track on lap 37 he told red bull to 
to give the place back without telling Mercedes first. And Mercedes didn't have time to tell Lewis's engineer to tell Lewis. Then of course Lewis went into the back of him due to that miscommunication. The whole race Max was driving dangerously and then engaging another driver but Michael Massey did nothing. He didn't allow the show to look at each of the incidents and ultimately give him a penalty. I feel like they're doing everything they can to let Max win and it's so unbelievable as Michael Massey has a stinker. He should have referred everything to the stewards as it's not his job to make a decision. The stewards are there for a reason as they have to be there to police F1. They need to make the decision and he doesn't. He just needs to make sure that he manages the race. He stopped the race when it shouldn't have been stopped and then didn't stop it when it should have. Absolute shit show by him. First and foremost, this was an absolute shit show by the FIA and Michael Massey. This race was one of the worst managed races I've ever seen. Michael Massey, the race director, had a stinker and a disaster all race. He kept trying to manage the race himself and not refer anything to the stewards. And this is confusing that the stewards are there for that precise job. He took all the responsibilities on himself and didn't allow the stewards to jump in as they were left with barely anything to do. This track is not good for racing and F1, but money talks in the sport and I hate that it does. F1 came to a dangerous track and which isn't right for F1. The F2 race and the F1 race had all been littered with crashes it was constant stop start and it wasn't racing the track should never be on the calendar and i really hope they reassess the track but unfortunately f1 has a long-term deal and i believe it'll still be on the track next year in terms of the rest of the race between the drivers i honestly don't know where to start it was such a bizarre race where hamilton won i managed to close the gap to zero in the championship but i feel like this isn't what i should be really talking about max Verstappen is a dirty driver i've said it once twice i'll say a hundred times I'm not gonna change my opinion. There's a reason why I keep saying this, is because he doesn't drive cleanly or fairly. I've done a previous video on this, so check the link in the description for that video, but for this race alone, we can see how he drives. I was praising him so much in the previous video in terms of his qualifying pace, as he should have got pole as that lap deserved pole position. But honestly, he's a danger to the sport and danger to other drivers. He has no respect for anyone or other other drivers. He does what he wants and he gets away with it. Dangerous drivers should not be allowed in the sport, and the fact that the FIA haven't been managing this correctly shows what they have to say about themselves. They've been so soft on Max and letting him get away with it. He did so many things wrong this whole race, and all he got was a 5 second penalty and a 10 second penalty after the race ended. And which in my opinion is diabolical. This was such bad behaviour, and honestly for what he did throughout the whole race, it's worthy of a race ban. You can't just drive dangerously, there's a fine line between racing and dangerous driving. Max constantly threw his car wherever he wanted, off the track, on the track, just to keep position. And of course the FIA and the stewards did nothing. He then brake tested Lewis which the stewards agreed on. He did this so Lewis passed him so he can get the DRS to pass him back straight away. He drives so erratically you just don't know what he's going to do next. I don't like this and it's not right for the sport. He shouldn't be in F1. This isn't racing, this is dangerous driving. Besides this Lewis did well to keep it on the track. He even said after the race he just kept it between the lines. Which clearly Max didn't do. It's a shame because all I wanted to see in the last two races was clean and fair racing. But unfortunately Max just doesn't know how to do that. He doesn't kneel and wants to always keep the position no matter what. And that means going off the line, passing off the line and doing whatever he can to win. I honestly fear for the last race as I feel like he'll just crash into Lewis and win the championship that way. He's ahead on the championship by virtue of him winning one more race and let me remind you that one more win was in Spa which I believe they should have cancelled anyway and not given half points. So let's see how it turns out. This is how the driver championship looks like. The gap at the top is zero and Bottas secures P3. This is how the Constructors' Championship looks like. Mercedes lead at the top is now 29 points from Red Bull. Ferrari now have a 38.5 gap to McLaren, which they're most likely holding to get to that third place in that Constructors. That result by Ocon has confirmed Alpine's fifth place as Alfa Tari are 29 points behind. We reached the end of the season with the last race in Abu Dhabi this weekend. I honestly don't know what to expect, as I wouldn't put it past Max to crash into Lewis and win the championship this year. He's basically been doing that all year round already, but I saw something online which I believe is so true. Lewis Hamilton all year has just been avoiding accidents with Max Verstappen. I mean, please deep that statement. Max has thrown his car wherever he wants ahead of Lewis and all Lewis has been doing trying to avoid that collision. Lewis has driven correctly all throughout the year while Max hasn't. This is not racing and this is not F1. I hate what the sport has become because the FIA hasn't managed it correctly but they set this precedent and now Max can do whatever he wants. Make sure you click the subscribe button below for more F1 news, analysis and opinion. Be sure to click the like button as it helps to push the channel out.